Hello and welcome to a new video on Echostate Neural Network and Apex Predator implemented in MQL5. I'm your host, Trader Zeta, and hopefully you're doing very, very well. So the first thing I should mention is I'm trying a new microphone, so hopefully this does work. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Um, here we can actually see that the Echostate Neural Network has been implemented in MQL5. Uh, we use two includes, uh, normal, well actually we don't really use normal, but we always I haven't deleted that. So we have to use uh, uniform because we're using uniform distribution. And here uh, I said that this is inspired by uh, CK and D's PI ASN. And we have only implemented one activation function. The other ones you can implement on your own if you like. So we just have the identity and inverse identity. Uh, here we have a function that prints out the matrix. This is actually quite useful. So you pass in the matrix double and the string name and it will display some information for you. Here we have implemented H stack that was uh, with some help from a friend who is very, very nice. Uh, v stack is also right here. And then we have uh, this extended states, which uh, more or less just uh, kind of flattens things. Uh, sorry, extended states flatten, teacher scale flatten, all of these are uh, incredibly, incredibly useful. Uh, correct dimensions, I don't think we use this too much, but um, it's implemented just to be uh, sure. So if we go over here, so here's the ESN um, class. We have some private variables. We have matrix random, sparsity, tan H. We have some uh, private variables here. Um, and here we have the activation function, uh, the weight one, weight in, weight feedback, and it weights. And we have scale input, scale input teacher, underscore scale teacher, and then update. And then the, in the public, we have the uh, constructor, we have the fit, and we have the prediction. So we have the continuation right here, which we will use. And we basically just implement the constructor. So we're just... Uh, you know, linking up a bunch of variables uh, using correct dimensionality here. So I guess it is kind of used uh, when we use input shift and input scaling. But in this case, uh, we're only using uh, teacher forcing, I think. So none of none of these are really active. The, uh, the, the scaling and the, all this other stuff isn't active. So what we have is init weights. And then here in the init weights, we're going to uh, get a matrix. We're going to fill it with some random values uniform between 0 and 1. We subtract by all of them by 0.5, and then we do the sparsity calculation. And then this is the deep part. Uh, for whatever reason, this matrix norm spectral radius doesn't come out with the right value. We have to do the W dot transpose plus the original uh, weight divide by two, and then the spectral radius then pops out more or less correct. It's very, very close. And then we uh, just multiply that by weight. And then here are some other weight calculations. I think these are pretty self-explanatory. Then we go through the update. So we have pre-activation. And then what we're going to do is this uh, matrix multiplication line right here. Um, here's the, the M underscore weight, M underscore weight in, feedback, et cetera, et cetera. And if teacher forcing is not true, then we're just going to use this one right here. And then we uh, tan H the pre-activation and so we have um, this uh, calculation here, right here, here. We have the pre-activation plus the temp with the noise in it. So we have to add the noise in and then times the temp rand minus a uh, matrix with 0.5 in it. So those are all 0.5. So here's scale inputs. Uh, this is the scaling of the inputs. This is the shifting of the inputs. This is scale teacher. Um, I think a lot of this is self-explanatory. Underscore skill, underscore teacher. Um, you just take it and you subtract by the shift. Um, and then you divide by the scaling. Very, very obvious. And then here comes the fit. So what we're going to do is we're going to get the, uh, we're going to scale the inputs and scale the, or uh, scale teacher outputs. Uh, we're going to get uh, some states. So we're going to fill it with zero. And then we're going to loop through and do this uh, update calculation. So this is a lot of um, you know stuff just within the language. Just, just this is just getting each individual row and then putting it into something that can be th uh, thrown into the update. And then states .row is updated. This is the transient value. Um, and you have the extended states. 
you basically h stack the states and the input scale to underscore t. We need to flatten everything. And then we have to find the pseudo inverse. Pseudo inverse is very, very interesting. Then we do our activation. Since uh, our activation function is just x, we don't have to really do anything. Um, and the inverse act out activation, inverse of x is just x, so we don't have to do anything there either. Uh, then we basically uh, flatten these uh, pseudo inverses and matrix multiply them with teacher scale t flat, transpose that, and we get our w out equals base. Then we have to get the, uh, the last row in every, um, all of these values to basically update. Do, uh, we do extend states multiplication, uh, matrix multiplication with w out base, transpose. And then we just want to calculate the mean squared error. That's really, really cool. So we uh, do delta, cred, train, minus outputs, and then you multiply that matrix by itself. Uh, Element-wise, that's squared. Then you take the square root, and that is the uh, mean squared error. And then in predict, it's kind of the same stuff. Um, we just get the, la if, it's, if continuation equals true, we just get the last inputs and last state and last output. And then we're going to basically just uh, create some of these uh, matrices right here. And then we're going to loop through just like we did in fit, but we're going to uh, get these rows right here, put it into update. And here's the state's row, and this is n plus one. Uh, a lot of this is very, very deep. So I'm just trying to go over uh, lightly what a lot of this is. So, um, Again, we have the identity, so we didn't have to do anything here. And then we just do extended states underscore flat and outputs. And then here we have the activation and the identity, out activation, and then we underscore scale, or un unscale teacher, flatten the outputs and then return. Okay, so then here is the uh, tan H, so cinch divided by cosh. Here's the random matrix, here's the uniform, here's the sparsity. And uh, the sparsity is equal, the end sparsity right now is equal to zero. So this will never be the case because the uniform distribution is always between zero and one. Okay. So that's the ESN. So hopefully uh, that helps a lot. Now I should say a few things is that I think it only really takes uh, square matrices. So it seems to only do well with square matrices. So I should make that as a caveat. Um, what we're going to now do is go over to Apex Predator. And what we're going to do is uh, spoil the beans, so to speak. All right. So what we're going to do is go all the way up to the very top. Here's the ESN. We, uh, we don't need, the, we do need math uh, normal. In this case, we need to sample the normal distribution. We have all of our trade uh, calculations, our position info, deal info, etc. Um, here is the C account info. We're instantiating all those classes. Here are my all, all my input variables. Here's some stuff to keep track of. Now, what we're going to do is our um, ESN is going to be a one by one, so it's going to take one value in, and so our shift needs to be one by one. We're going to fill that with zero, and uh, the scaling is a one by one, and we're going to fill that with this should be one actually. Oh well. 1.0. Uh, it doesn't really matter because it's not active. So this is these are all the var uh, variables. So if teacher scaling on false, teacher or uh, input scaling false, teacher shifting, all this other kind of stuff. And then the constructor is very very long, but it's uh, very very doable. So we have a one by one matrix, 500 neurons, uh, 0.95 spectral radius. Um, the sparsity is zero. The noise is 0 0.001. Here's the shift. And then all the other ones um, are kind of for you. So what we need to do is calculate the volatility. Okay, so here's the vol. Um, we're going to basically take the current price divided by the previous price, natural logarithm, square it, add them all up, and then take uh, the square root uh, just after we divide by the depth. And that's just a volatility calculation. Then we're going to do mu, so we need to sum these all up and then divide by um, uh, the number that we added up by. And then what we also need to do is scale our calculations. So 
Let me go down here really quick and not do too much of that just yet. If we were just to do the mu and the volatility, it wouldn't, you know, make any sense to the, to the echo state neural network because the volatility is like 0 .00001, something like that. And mu is like, you know, uh, 1,100 or something like whatever. So what we have to do is we have to scale these to, you know, between values between like 0 and 2, essentially. Really between 1 and 2 is kind of the best for, for me personally. And so what we're going to do is we're going to use these uh, scale volatility. So the volatility is so incredibly small, we need to, need to do e to the e to the value minus 1. And then on scale, we just take the inverse of that function. Scale mu, we're going to do uh, log that value minus 8. And then we're just going to take the inverse of that uh, function for unscale mu. Okay. Then here's my implement. Let me actually move this over here so you can see. I think that works. Um, here's my implementation of geometric Brownian motion. Um, I I think I've done this in a video before, but uh, I won't go over it too far because this is a solution to a stochastic differential equation, and that's a lot to explain in just this video. But basically what this is going to do is it's going to take sigma, mu, a time, a current price, you know, with a number of samples and steps into the future, and it's going to give us the, um, uh, the pred pricing. Okay, and we have to define by samples. Yes, okay, cool. And now what we have to do is go over here. So our vol is a one by one, our mu is a one by one. We also have ones one by one, and we're gonna fill them with uh, obviously ones. Our time frame is going to be uh, minute 30. And here we are just going to uh, scale the volatility, scale the mu, um, scale, we're going to do the fit ones with the volatility, fit ones with the mu, and continuation is going to equal true. So we're going to put that into the predict. So we have all these like predictions. So we want to unscale the prediction and unscale the volatility and the mu. We've done that here. Now the thing is, is that uh, there, you know, certain times, you know, may be more interesting than others to trade. My personal interest is that I only want to trade um, you know, around like, you know, the open. So uh, I, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to control that with the time. So I have a date time, TM current, put that into a time struct, check to see if any positions are open. And my trades are all not going to last any longer than 30 minutes. So this, this code does that right here. This prevents it from going past 30 minutes. Same here, this prevents the cell from going past 30 minutes. And then uh, if we wanted to do a martingale, it's set up to do a martingale, but right now the scale factor is just one because it's not really necessary. Um, so here we have, uh, if it's Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday, and the hour is greater than 17 and less than 23, and it's on the minute, then what we're going to do is we're going to uh, do all this stuff, right? So min tracker stm.min. So this basically means this only runs every minute. Okay, and then we're going to get the real mu and the real volatility. N is this number right here. T equals one. So our dt equals uh, T divided by N. We want to get the actual price uh, as best we can. So between the ask and the bid. So we do the ask plus the bid divided by two. And we're going to throw all those values into the uh, geometric Brownian motion, get our pred price. We're going to print out our pred price. And if the pred price is greater than the cur price, it's going to buy. If the pred price is less than the cur sell, uh, or sorry, cur, cur price, uh, it's going to sell. So that's Apex Predator in a nutshell. I have not done the, um, the error calculation yet. And I'm not even sure if I need to because... When I looked at this the first time, it was really, really, really good. And so we're going to look at it together and hopefully it's going to be really, really awesome in the back test. And we don't really, we might not even need to calculate the, uh, do like do a ESN prediction and geometric variety motion of the error. Like that might not even be necessary here. So let's check it out. Woo. Look at that. It's just straight up so far. So it's incredibly beautiful. So in um, three days, we've gone to $332 with a lot size of one. I think that's really, really good. I like that. That's a lot of fun. So uh, hopefully you enjoyed this video. I'll like, share.